Good morning everybody, uh, welcome back to the uh, the channel. If you're new, my name's Bernie, and today we've got something special. Uh, the team at Lauer uh, have sent me the 10mm f4 cookie lens uh, for the Fujifilm X-mount uh, gear. So uh, obviously what I'm currently using. Um, and also on the uh, the video front, uh, I've tried something a little bit different as well. I've got the TT Artisans 27mm 2.8. So it'll be interesting to see how the video kind of pans out today as well, using that lens predominantly, and I'll let you know uh, when I do change that up to a 5140 or maybe a 10 to 24 mil. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna head around the, the region here uh, with the uh, 10 mil f4 cookie lens. So it's not a pancake, it's a cookie. Um, and we're gonna photograph uh, some of the uh, key locations around the uh, southern kind of the Otago region. Uh, so it's uh, nice and snowy at the moment. Uh, so we should get some nice scenes. And it will be a bit of a test for me because I'm not usually one for an ultra wide lens. Uh, with the 10 to 24, I usually use it at that kind of 15 to 24 mil lens uh, 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 focal length. Uh, don't usually use it at 10 mil. So this will be interesting. But I'm going to use this, uh, the 10 mil on the 10 to 24 as our base, so I can see kind of how it performs against a native Fujifilm lens. So let's get stuck into it. We've got the Cadrona pub behind us here. So we're going to start off with this one, uh, photograph that with some nice straight lines, check out the distortion, check out the vignetting, um, and any other things that we seem to find out about this lens. So let's get stuck into it. Alrighty, so like I just said, we're gonna start off with the 10mm uh, lower lens in front of the Cadrona Hotel here. Obviously with the 27mm on the video, it's kind of compressing the scene a little bit with me in front of it. But with the 10mm, it's ultra wide. It's so getting a lot of the sky, a lot of the road. So we're gonna kind of use some of these features to kind of help kind of make the most of this composition. Again, not something I'd probably go wide on, um, but I think it's gonna work out quite nicely with this nice morning light. So let's uh, have a look at uh, how it performs and then we'll do some testing at f4, f8, and f11, just to see how that sharpness goes, vignetting, um, and any other characteristics of the lens, and then compare it to the Fujifilm one. Alrighty, so if there's one reason to buy this lens, um, as you can see on the front here, is it's its size and its weight. So, you know, yes, it's gonna be, you know, relatively sharp, all modern lenses are, but the, um, the size and the weight is the key feature here. So if you're traveling, if you're going on long, long distance hikes and you, you just want to throw a nice wide angle in the bag, then this is the one that I would look at. And it's also that price point as well. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than a lot of other wide lenses on the market, especially something like the 10 to 24, which is what we're going to test it again. The 10 to 24, having that variable uh, focal length, there's obviously a lot more versatility. Um, but if you're just wanting something just in case you need a wide, because I don't use it a lot, then this could be a good option for you. Okay, now as you can see from the composition here, we've gone ultra wide. Uh, we can't go any further because there's obviously a road in front of us. Uh, but we're using these little tire marks here um, as almost leading lines into the scene. So kind of utilizing everything we can to try and make something of this. And we've also got the added uh, um, challenge of having all these cars in the scene going through. So we're having to pick our moments to be able to get the shot. So as you can see, leading lines in the screen, a lot of negative space in the sky. Unfortunately, we lose the mountains given the focal length is so wide. Um, whereas if we went back a little bit, you'd be able to get both the mountains, the, the, um, the pub, and then also the road in the foreground. So this is only because it's so, so wide. If you use the longer lens from further back, you'd get the mountains, you'd get the pub, and then you get the road as well. So let's take the shot and, um, and then see how the Fuji lens performs. And um, like we always do, um, I'll have the self timer on uh, just for two seconds. And this way um, you can stop any camera shake because I will be touching the camera to set it off. So let's take the photo now and see what it looks like and then change out. Just wait for this car. Perfect. Just changed it out to the 10 to 24 mil, and as you can see, it's a hell of a lot bigger. Um, but we'll see how it compares against the uh, 
the lower lens, the 10mm f4. Um, so we're gonna use the same settings, same f-stops, f4, f8, f11, and just see how it goes and, and just compare some of the characteristics of the lens. And um, I'll show those photos now, and then after that, I'm just gonna make my way around the area and just take a few more shots and do the same comparisons. So let's see how we go. finding there are some differences between the Fuji 10 to 24 and the 10 mil. Um, there is a lot more vignetting in the photo, um, which you can see is pretty evident in uh, a lot of the uh, the photos, so a lot of the darker kind of area. I don't think it's gonna be too hard to correct this in post, but something to kind of keep in mind. So we've got the old schoolhouse behind us now, so I'm just gonna run around and photograph that. Um, and again, just checking out the distortion and other lens characteristics, so let's have a look. Alrighty, before we head back into the, uh, the car and head to our next location, uh, let's do a quick kind of pros and cons of the lens so far. So what I'm loving, loving the size and weight, like having something, having something that small and light in the hand, it's just, it's really nice. It's almost like a, a body cap for your camera um, and you could use it like that and then swap out for other lenses when you need them. Um, so I'm loving the size and weight. Um, I think the ergonomics are pretty good. Sometimes I find, because I've got quite large hands, that the, um, the aperture ring is quite close to the camera. Uh, so I'm having to really kind of find that, but I guess you're gonna get used to it. Um, I like where the, the manual focus uh, ring's sitting um, at the front there. Easy to find, easy to use, um, and um, quite a nice kind of dampener on the, um, on the aperture clicks as well. So I'm loving the usability, loving the size and weight. Things that I'm not too sure about at the moment uh, would be the vignetting, seems quite harsh. Um, but I do think in post, as long as you don't kind of under, underexpose it too much, if you expose it well, you should be able to correct that um, with, with, with not too much of a, an issue at all. So I've just got that in the back of my mind, but I don't think that's gonna be an issue. Um, and the sharpness overall looks really good. Um, compared to the Fujifilm, I've done just some back of screen uh, zoom ins just to see kind of what we're up against and it seems to hold its own. Yeah, so at the moment, just the vignetting. Something to note though on this camera is it's not weather sealed. Um, so if you are going out in the weather, uh, we're lucky today, it's not raining, it's not snowing, um, it's just freezing cold. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind of, because I know that that's something that means a lot to people that go out in the, in the weather. For me, yes, I'm always out and about, but I've had other weather sealed cameras and lenses in the past, and you just make do. You can put a little bag around it, you can get covers, so it's not the end of the world. So I wouldn't say that, given the price point, 
that's not a reason that I wouldn't buy the lens, but something to just understand about the lens itself. So, uh, alrighty, let's jump in the car, next location, and um, see how we go there. Alrighty, now I've just found this spot. It's only maybe a couple of hundred meters from the Cadrona Hotel, which is pretty lucky. Um, it looks like the old um, Cadrona Church, uh, maybe a um, yeah, the church, and then obviously just the toilet block as well. So I reckon we could probably do something with this. Um, again, it's gonna be quite challenging uh, because there's not a lot of leading lines. So we're gonna have to get creative and um, use some of the lens's features to try and make this work. So let's see how we go. Now, because I'm unsure about how I'm gonna compose the scene, I'm actually gonna take the camera off the tripod so I can really maneuver the camera around and get into some different um, types of compositions. Um, because this camera can close focus up to 10 centimeters. Um, so I think we're, what we're gonna be able to do is get real close to subjects um, and then use that wide angle lens to kind of uh, frame things um, or, um, yeah, or, or use them as kind of subtle leading lines or patterns in the scene. So let's see how we go. Um, I've got a few ideas with the fence, maybe the path leading up to the, the church in the background um, and also these trees um, in the foreground. So um, yeah, let's just, uh, yeah, let's get creative and uh, get our wide angle hats on and see if we can make it work. All right, so what I'm doing here is using the fence here and I'm getting nice and close to it. And it's exaggerating those kind of points in the, uh, in the foreground and then using those to kind of, you know, kind of create a, um, a similar pattern in the church top being that um, kind of pointy shape and then also the tree tops as well. And then we've got the two trees either side here, which is just kind of framing that composition and bringing it in nice and close. So I think this is gonna work quite well. And then again, making sure you focus correctly because it is a manual focus lens. We should be pretty good, just short of infinity. And again, trying not to cut those tree tops off. Um, so we've got kind of everything in the scene. So I think that's kind of worked quite well. So I think the thing is about this lens is you've really got to use it to bring out the characteristics of the place. You know, you want to accentuate the foregrounds, accentuate the overhanging trees, um, you know, bring out all those little characteristics of both, you know, the, um, the location and the subject. So we're really having to, to try here to kind of, you know, because the, the church is so far away in the distance, is use things in the foreground to kind of bring it out. So as you saw before, I used the fence as a bit of a, um, a foreground kind of amplifier. So what I'm going to do now is actually do the same thing but I'm gonna angle the camera up and I'm gonna get those overarching trees to kind of come into the photo and kind of hang over the top. So the church becomes a lower part of the composition and then the trees kind of come in and over using that kind of, I guess the distortion of a wide angle lens to kind of make those trees kind of come in and come over the top of the, the subject. You gotta watch out for how kind of much you do this because the more you tilt that um, the camera, the more you're actually going to distort the building because you're gonna take it out the center of the frame into the corners or the bottom, and then it's gonna to start to look a little bit wonky. So it depends on how far you're willing to push the photo in order to get something a little different. And like I said before, you know, this lens, um, it does focus quite close. Um, but instead of focusing close, because uh, I don't have anything that I want to, like any flowers or anything interesting to photograph um, you know, as a close-up subject, I'm going to actually use the um, extreme wide angle to use um, a little hole in the fence here, kind of as a frame around our subject, so our subject being the church in the background, um, and I'm going to place the subject in that frame and then come in nice and close to that hole, so then it kind of becomes a frame around the image and really draws your attention to our subject. So let's have a look at how we do that now. Alrighty, so this is the hole we're talking about here. So because it's so wide angle, what you can do is you can get your camera 
and kind of get it right up close to the fence. Um, and this then exposes, and because it's so wide, it allows that full kind of church to sit inside this area in the image, and it creates a nice frame. So a nice foreground, middle ground, and then the frame, and then the church in the background. So we'll give this a shot now, and we'll do a couple of different variations. And it will take some time to get this right, but I think it's going to be worth it. Alrighty, so um, we've looked at how we can kind of use that kind of close-up. I'm just going to um, kind of walk around here now. There's some kind of nice leading lines of the path there. I'm going to get up nice and close with the church and go full distortion uh, and see if we can get some creative angles uh, with that as well. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm just going to head around here now, take a few shots, um, see if I can find anything else, and then we might just uh, summarise and see what we've loved and what we haven't been so fond of with the 10mm F4. So in conclusion, uh, the, uh, the lovely 10mm f4 cookie lens, not a pancake, cookie, um, is, a, is a fantastic lens. The things I love about it, it's well engineered, it's kind of that full metal construction, feels nice and weighty um, you know, in the hand, you know, it's got a nice uh, manual focusing mechanism there and a nice aperturing as well. Um, which is great, you know, it's good, got good kind of center and kind of mid-frame sharpness. It does seem to kind of fall off a little bit on the edges. Um, and obviously you've got that, um, quite that, uh, a, a fair amount of vignetting as well, which is uh, a bit of a shame, but with a bit of post, you can correct that out. And again, like I said before, I think with these lenses, uh, especially at, this, at the cost of these lenses, um, compared to your premium um, wide angles, you've got to kind of lean into the character, uh, characterization of the lens. So, They've got some beautiful characteristics, um, and if you lean into it, you can get some really nice um, results uh, with some very nice kind of looks and feels to them as well. So yes, you can correct them if you wanted to. Um, there's a couple of shots there that I feel like the vignetting actually works really well, but I'd probably rather a flatter image and then I'd add the vignette in post, um, rather than having a vignette and having to try and correct it out. So um, that's something I'm not too, not too fond of. Other big things for me, uh, although the construction of the lens is fantastic, it does lack weather sealing. And again, for a lot of people, this is a problem. For me, I'm a bit of a user and abuser when it comes to lenses um, so, and, and camera gear. So I just like to use it, get the job done. Um, I'm not too worried about the weather. Um, if things happen on shoots all the time, whether it's weather sealed or not, um, if you do find yourself in the rain, you can always just cut a hole out of a plastic bag, chuck it over your camera and your lens. I don't see that as a big issue, and it's never been a reason for me to buy or not buy a lens, um, but it's always good to have it. Um, it's always just something, a little extra insurance. Um, the big negative for me is, um, as you can see, there's no 
um, electronics uh, on the camera, uh, so it doesn't talk to the camera at all. So what you do lose here is autofocus, uh, which is obvious because you've got the manual focus ring. Um, so that could be a big negative for a lot of people who aren't used to or don't want to put in the time to learn how to manual focus the lenses. Um, I really enjoy it. I think it's a great kind of, um, it's a great thing to learn, but it's also a little bit of fun. It connects you with your camera and it's, it's really nice to kind of refine. Um, but not having the electronics, you do lose some of that um, uh, XF data material. Um, so for a lot of people, that's an issue. Again, for me, uh, you know, it, it's good when you're reviewing or you're showing other people your photos or you're teaching. Um, but otherwise, I couldn't care less what lens or camera or whatever I shot it on, as long as the image looks good. So for peop some people, it could be a big thing. Uh, for others, not so much. Um, but otherwise, look, I think for the cost, for the size, for the weight, um, yeah, um, it's a bloody great inclusion to, to, to my camera bag and I can see it coming on a, many a hikes with me because, uh, like I said, not a big wide angle user uh, unless it's a nice kind of leading line or a stream into a mountainous scene. Um, so I don't see myself using the, you know, the 10 mil on the 10 to 24 a lot. Um, I'd probably be better with a 16 to 55 because that'd be my, my major use case. And then having this little 10 mil cookie for the odd odd chance that I would actually use a, an extreme wide and this does a great job um, and like I said any of those things that it's kind of missing or it's not so good at you can correct in post or kind of get away with so I'm not too worried about it. Um, look if you do have any questions I know this is a different kind of review it's not a spec driven review if you want to look at a spec sheet check out their website um, I'll link it down below otherwise there's a million other YouTubers out there doing just specs I like to take these things out into the field show you how you know you could use it what my thoughts are and what my actual use case is for a lens like this um, otherwise yeah I don't know spec sheets not my thing um, so look let me know if you've got any questions um, and I'm happy to ask them in the comment section below otherwise um, yeah we'll see you next week uh, and shortly we'll be reviewing the lens that I've been videoing on today which is the TT Artisans 27mm 2.8 AF lens so very excited to shoot with that as I've used the Fujinon 27 2.8 uh, for a number of years. So it'd be good to kind of see how this compares and if it's any good. So look, if you have enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Thank you so much.